Hey guys, how's it going? Happy New Year. And for today's card, I'm going to start with a five and a half by four and a quarter ish piece of cardstock and start an ink blend using spun sugar, picked raspberry, and seedless preserves. I want to make sure that I start with the spun sugar, the lettuce of my inks in the middle, working out to picked raspberry, and finally around the outer edge, some seedless preserves. And just to make sure that my card front didn't move, I taped that down with a piece of rolled up tape on the back. And to make sure my stencil doesn't move, I taped it down to my work surface. Using Perfect Medium by Ranger, I'm just going to move it through the stencil just by pressing it down on top of it. If I had a Perfect Medium pen, that's what I would have preferred, but I'm all about using what you have. To create some shiny snowflakes, I'm using Perfect Pearls in Grape Frizz and just pushing it across the stencil with a brush, making sure to get into all the little nooks and crannies, followed by Perfect Pearl and Confetti White. And to clean the stencil, once I remove it from my card front, I will either spray it with rubbing alcohol or pour some rubbing alcohol over it, then flip the pearled and medium side down into the little alcohol puddle just to let that alcohol break up the adhesive. And the Perfect Pearl wipes off fairly easily. I kind of do tend to leave right around the delicate openings because they do tend to get bent a little bit. This could be prevented if I use a Perfect Medium pen. And once I lift up that stencil, the snowflake pattern is revealed and I'm just going to tap off the excess before spraying it from a fair distance with a fine mist of water. Spraying it without the stencil on it will cause the Distress ink in the middle to react a little bit. I like that effect and it fits into my snowflake theme. If you didn't want that for your card, you could simply give it a fine mist before you remove the stencil and then remove the stencil and Set it with your heat tool. Using the layered warbler wafer die from Simon Says Stamp, I'm going to start off with some speckled egg. And I'm just going to give a base coat to most of the bird, leaving the belly free of speckled egg and of course not the feet or the beak. I do realize though, after inking for a little bit, that the last time I used this particular foam brush, I was using an oxide, but that's no problem. If that ever happens to you, you can just wipe it off with a microfiber cloth or a piece of paper towel. Bringing in next some Mermaid Lagoon to the belly of that bird, as well as to the more decorative elements like the crest and the wing and the head. followed by Uncharted Mariner. I want to make sure that I'm just using the Uncharted Mariner on the more colorful parts that you would typically find on a bird, like the crest, the wing, and the head. And then I'll use Peacock Feathers to tie everything together and give it a more of a green indigo-y hue. For the feet, I want to give the feet a base, like just a really light base of vintage photo. 
followed by fossilized amber, both on the feet as well as the beak. To adhere the bird together, I'm using Tombow Liquid Adhesive. And the thing that I really like about this die is that it fits together really nicely. There's no real guessing as to where thing goes. It, it fits really nicely together like a puzzle. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old sign For old sign After running those through my die cut machine, I want to add just a little bit of shimmer to those branches to tie them together with the card. And I'm using a brush to pick up a little bit of water as well as Forever Red Perfect Pearl and just painting those berries. And before I add them to the card front, I want to make sure that they're dry and you can either let them just dry on their own or set them with the heat tool. To adhere those together and to the card front, I'm using Tombow Liquid Adhesive. I created a five and a quarter by four rectangle from the snowflake background I created earlier using the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitched Rectangle Stackables die set. 
using the largest rectangle. The bird was also adhered with liquid adhesive and for placement I wanted to make sure that the bird was going to be framed by the snowflakes and not sitting on top of the Perfect Pearl snowflakes. I also wanted to make sure that the bird's feet were sitting on branches, but I didn't like how the feet were so exposed. It's not something that I would normally see in nature. So to counter that, I added the second branch on top of the feet to not only give the card more dimension, but make it look more in place, more natural, if you were. Nouveau crystal drops in black was added to the eye of the bird. This I felt brought, gave him more dimension but also brought him to life a little bit. The sentiment Happy New Year was from Lawn Fawn's Happy 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 add-on clear stamps. And before I emboss that, I want to make sure that all the static is gone from my card base. So I just gave that a quick wipe with a paintbrush as well as a dryer sheet. You can also use an anti-static powder tool if you have one. Using Versamark ink, I'll adhere the embossing powder to the card front. This is a gold detail embossing powder from Recollections. I just picked this up at my local craft store and I'll give that a set with my heat tool. Five and a half by four and a quarter inch rectangle was cut from glitter cardstock using large stitched rectangle stackables die set from Lawn Fawn just to create that nice little mat underneath the snowflake background. I like the two together just to give that little mat. And the entire card front was adhered to the card base using liquid adhesive as well. You could also use a tape if you prefer. And there you have our New Year Bird Happy New Year card. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a happy new year. All the best wishes for 2023. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.